You know, I, I've been married for 21 years. And my wife is one of the hardest workers I know. I mean, she can work circles around most people I know. And one summer specifically, she thought she would do my parents a solid. And she would, at the beginning of summer, she went over to their house and she decided that she was going to mow the lawn for them. So she breaks out my dad's mower. She pull starts it to life. She does a couple passes up and down the lawn. And next thing she knows, the engine starts smoking and it seizes up. And in a panic, she calls my dad and she says, I was really trying to do you a solid and, and, and uh, mow the lawn at the beginning of the summer for you, get it started for you, uh, but something happened to the engine. And then unbeknownst to her, my dad began to tell her, well, I had just drained the oil out and I was in the process of changing it, so thanks for that. So we got to buy a new mower. It was incredible. And the reality is, is though, if you've been a mechanic, you've been around engines at all, you realize that oil is a critical attribute or component that is needed to function. Yes? Yeah. Nod your head, say yes. Okay. All right. That is a true story. All right. Yes. You need oil in the engine for it to function. It's an attribute that is needed in anything that's mechanical. And the reality is, I think we as Christians are missing a critical attribute these days. It's a critical attribute that I want to kind of define for you, talk about today. An attribute is defined as a quality or feature regarded as a characteristic. There's a characteristic that I think is missing in the average Christian today. And I find even at seasons and moments in my life, that attribute, that characteristic has been missing. And so I need to come back to that and look at that once again. This characteristic, I want to give you some hints. Maybe you can pick up on what this is as I share a few passages and reminders from Scripture. Maybe you'll pick up on this characteristic. When Jesus was born, the angels announced in Luke chapter 2, good tidings of great joy. In Luke 7, Jesus' enemies accused him of being too joyful on occasion. In Mark 2, Jesus described himself as a bridegroom enjoying a wedding feast. Jesus spoke of my joy in John 15 and promised to give his disciples a lifetime supply of joy in John 16, 24. Many of Jesus' parables, including the three stories that we see him share in Luke chapter 15, they mention rejoicing in the presence of angels. And there's three stories and they end with a joyful shepherd finding a lost sheep, a joyful woman finding a lost coin, and a joyful father welcoming a wayward son home. If you missed it, let me help you out. It's joy. Everybody say joy. Joy. You said it so painfully. Let's try it again. Say joy. Joy. I'm telling you, I believe that some of us Christians today have lost this critical attribute, critical characteristic called joy. What is joy and engines and oil have in common. Bear with me, I'll get there. But I want to look at two different passages. If you want, you can turn to Luke chapter 4, and we're also going to be in the book of Isaiah. If you want to make your way there, we're going to camp out there for a few moments. Luke chapter 4, verse 16, speaks of Jesus. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Anybody want a year like that? Three people. All right. Good for you. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, Jesus is referring from the book of Isaiah, and more specifically, we know that is Isaiah chapter 61. If you want to make your way there, I want to follow up the next few verses from this passage that Jesus was speaking of in the book of Luke. So we find it here in Isaiah 61, starting verse 2. Sounds familiar. It starts off, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Verse 3, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy 
instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. The oil of joy, I believe, is a critical attribute, a critical component that's missing in the engine and the lifestyle of Christians today. Perhaps you have been around somebody. I like to call them a fun sponge. They suck up every bit of joy in the room. They're pessimistic beyond belief. They'll tell you why it won't work before they'll even come up with a solution why it will work. You know what I'm talking about. Don't look at the person next to you if they're that person, all right? It's just awkward. But there are some believers that I believe today have ceased to function, have come to a screeching halt because we focus so much on the news, the circumstance, or what other people are saying, and we've lost, forgotten our oil of joy. The more I sit down to study the oil of joy, the more I find another word within close proximity. And I wonder if it's just the key to help us understand and unlock the oil of joy in our life. It happens to be another attribute, another characteristic of God. And maybe you'll pick up on it. I want to go back to Isaiah 61 verse 3. I know it seems a little repetitive, but that helps us get it in our head and our heart. All right. Isaiah 61 3. And to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. What if the oil of joy is found in righteousness? Just by chance, what if the oil of joy, that joy that you've been missing, that joy that has been lacking, that joy that has been gone and caused you to cease and stop moving and been stuck in the middle of whatever season you're in, maybe it could be found once again in righteousness. Because every time I study the oil of joy, I find this other attribute, this other characteristic within cr close proximity in Scripture. Righteousness is defi uh, defined as the character or quality of being right or just. How many like to be right? Some of you are like, I'm right all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but how do I obtain the oil of joy when I am not always right? Sometimes hard to admit. How do I walk and live in the oil of joy if I am definitely not perfect? How do I move and operate and live my life with the oil of joy if I'm definitely not God? Psalm 45 is referenced as a messianic psalm. It's speaking to the coming Messiah who we know as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's speaking to this. And this passage is about Jesus. I want you to read it with me here. Psalm 45, verse 7. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. This is an attribute, a characteristic, and a descriptor of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. It is who we should be serving, who we understand Jesus is as the coming Messiah if we've said yes to him. But I want to give us a few thoughts today on how we can obtain and walk in and operate in the oil of joy. The first is this. Obtaining the oil of joy begins with faith in Jesus. That sounds simple. It sounds like something that everybody should know, but let me just speak to those of you in the room or those of you joining us online that you've never said yes to a relationship with Jesus. I'm telling you, it all begins. Real joy, real joy starts and is found and obtained in Jesus. That's where it's found. Some of us as believers probably need to be reminded of that as well today. Listen, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this. God made him, Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We are righteous through Christ. Anybody thankful for that? My best day doesn't measure up. My best day does not equate to righteousness. I am never always going to be right. I'm never always going to be just. But it is in the righteousness of Christ that I can step under that umbrella, that holy anointing, and I can be anointed with the oil of joy because he has been anointed above every other person. 
It is through Christ that I can have the oil of joy. It is through him that I can have the righteousness that is the key to unlocking the oil of joy in my life. Charles Spurgeon said this, He, Jesus, is anointed because he is righteous. We are anointed that we may be righteous. And thus in Christ, we come into the condition in which it is safe for us to be glad and possible for joy to dwell in us. To the unrighteous, the oil of joy cannot come. But to the righteous, light rises even in darkness. The reality is, it is through Christ and Christ alone that you obtain the oil of joy. And if you can't begin there, you will struggle to find true joy because happiness is often based on circumstance and the situation. And let's be honest, it always hasn't panned out for you and I. It's been a rough season and you've looked in the mirror one too many times and there hasn't been a smile on your face. But I'll tell you, when you rest in the presence of Jesus, the oil of joy can be obtained. The second thought is this. Developing the oil of joy happens when you let Jesus deal with your sin. Let me say it again. Developing the oil of joy happens when you let Jesus deal with your sin. And listen, if you're sitting here and going, well, I said yes to Jesus and I've obtained my oil of joy and I did it 25 years ago. Well, bless God, that is awesome. But have you let anything creep in and get your heart all crusty and you've become the fun sponge that nobody likes when you walk in the room? The reality is, is if we're honest, I have been this way, maybe you have been this way, that when you walk in the room, there is no smile on your face, that you rob the room of joy. And the reality is, is that sometimes sin creeps in crusts over our heart, stands in the gap between us and a righteous, holy God, but it is through Jesus and it is through allowing him daily, weekly, and annually to deal with the sin that we've let creep in. 1 John 1.8 says this, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I obtained the oil of joy when I allowed Jesus to come into my life, but not only come into my life as my Lord and Savior, but I regularly let him deal with the sin that separates me from God. And if you think that you're all that in a bag of chips and you ain't got no issues, listen, I'm telling you, my, my issues have issues. And I need Jesus to deal with them. And it stands in the way. And, and listen, I, I want you to write this down because sometimes we need to get this in our head and our heart. Sin is the enemy of joy. Simply put, sin is the enemy of joy. It will rob you of joy when you let it come in, when you start to begin to lean into other things and other people instead of Jesus. We'd rather turn on the news to get our answers and starting turning to Jesus. We'd rather look to other people instead of looking to Jesus. We'd rather look at our circumstances instead of looking to Jesus. But I'll tell you what, the more I've done that, the more, more pain I find in my life. And the reality is my smile is gone from my face. And when I walk in a room, nobody wants to be around me. We have a staff member who a few weeks ago, they took their uh, car to a local place to get the oil changed. They got the oil changed. A few days later, they're driving their car, and all of a sudden, all the warning lights come on on their cluster of their car, and they pull over, and they look underneath their car, and there's a huge puddle of oil. It had all drained out of the engine, and that engine ceased to work. The reality was is the people that changed the oil, they didn't fully tighten the, the oil plug on the bottom, and so it just leaked out all over. I think the reality is, is there are some Christians today that our oil of joy has leaked out through the pain and the process of life and allowing other things to come in and take precedence over Jesus, allowing other things to become our dependency instead of Jesus. And because of that, we have ceased to function. I don't know about you, but I want to be the person that walks in the room 
And people go, what do you have that I don't? And honestly, if I could distill down my challenge for you in this new year, is that you'd be the person, the Christian, the follower of Jesus, that when you walk into a room for the rest of this year, people go, wait a second, what do you have that I don't? Just maybe the oil of joy and the lack of it is an indicator that we have not dealt with some things in our life and drawn once again close to Jesus and let him deal with our sin. Psalm 51.12 says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sometimes we can walk so long and so in life and so far from that moment of salvation, that moment of change, that moment of, of incredible the parts where we're set free and we've said, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior, and we walk so far away from that that we forget about the joy of our salvation. So restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So obtaining the oil of joy begins with faith in Jesus. Developing the oil of joy happens when you let Jesus deal with your sin. Next, the oil of joy is increased by the Holy Spirit. At North Place, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not the crazy uncle that you don't want to invite to the party. The Holy Spirit is incredible and powerful and active and moving and making Scripture relevant to me today. Making Scripture relevant to you today. I'm going to be in the book of Galatians for a few moments, specifically chapter 5, if you want to turn there. But... Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, some of you may be familiar with this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Notice the number two attribute and characteristic and fruit of the Spirit is joy. Not a fun sponge. Not somebody who walks in the room and robs it of any hope or blessing. Galatians 5, 16, so I say to you, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Verse 25, since, you, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving and active in everyday life, and we allow him, the Holy Spirit, to be present and moving and active. You watch. The oil of joy increases. Why? Because your flesh is not winning out every day, but the Spirit of God that is within you is winning out every day. And it draws you closer to him and closer to him. And in that closeness, it is where you find your righteousness. Listen, I don't know if you can relate to the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy, but I, I, I sure can. He says, I, I am the chief of all sinners. I can totally relate. I am a prodigal son in progress. My best day will never measure up, and that's why I'm grateful for Jesus being my Lord and Savior. But I've realized as time has passed that I need to let Jesus deal with my sin and I need to walk in step with the Holy Spirit so that way I, I can tend to just, I don't know if you can relate, but I can tend to just sit back and rely on grace a little too much. I don't need to deal with that part of my life, Jesus. I, your grace is sufficient for me. And it is. But the reality is, is when I let the Holy Spirit do a work in me and walk with me, I find myself getting closer to him and keeping all that in check. And it causes me to be even more grateful for his grace. John 15, 8 says this. This is, my, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Listen, if you walk into a room and you rob it of joy and blessing, you might need to check the fruit on your tree. But when you walk into a room and smiles begin to erupt on people's faces because you're walking a little differently despite your circumstance, you are bearing fruit that honors Jesus and it shows the world you're his disciple. 
Listen, I, I'm excited about letting the Holy Spirit do a work in me in the coming weeks. I mentioned it earlier in the service, but I'm telling you, I'm so excited because Pastor Brian's going to be launching in, us into our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I can't think of a better way to make sure that my life is in alignment with God's, God's purpose and directives and character and attributes than stepping into a season of prayer and fasting. That looks different for everybody. And Pastor Brian's going to kick that off next week. And I want to encourage you, lean in next weekend and get ready to say, God, I want to take the journey with you. What do you want to do? What do you want to speak to my life? I know that the Holy Spirit is going to increase the oil of joy in the weeks ahead. As I lean in, and I just want to challenge you to lean in with me. So obtaining the oil of joy begins with faith in Jesus. Developing the oil of joy happens when you let Jesus deal with your sin. The oil of joy is increased by the Holy Spirit. And finally, here's really the measuring stick. The oil of joy is evident by what you love. By what you love. The oil of joy is evident by what you love. I want to read this really slow in the book of John. I want you to capture every aspect of this passage of Scripture. John 15, verse 9. I'm going to just read it real slow. I want it to sink in. As the Father has loved me, this is Jesus' words, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I'm just going to read that last passage one more time. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The battle for righteousness is fought at the level of what you love. The battle for righteousness is fought at the level of what you love. And if I confess that I've stood in the mirror one too many times in the past season and there's not been a smile on my face, the truth is it's because I've loved other things more than Jesus. When life hits hard and the season's been tough, the oil of joy hasn't been present. And honestly, it's because I've been battling with my righteousness and their struggle is, is that I love other things more than Jesus. I want to be really clear because somebody needs to hear this. The oil of joy is not the absence of pain. The oil of joy is not the absence of sorrow. Life hits hard. But you, as a disciple of Jesus, are called to walk into a room and change the atmosphere. People should start to ask, what do you have that I don't have? It's Jesus. It's a Lord and Savior who is complete righteousness, and so I don't have to be. But every day I let him deal with my sin, I walk in step with the Holy Spirit, and I love Jesus more than anything. And when I do that, the oil of joy is present and changes a room. My challenge for you this year is that when you step into a room, you'll change the atmosphere. Because despite your pain, your sorrow, and your circumstance, the oil of joy is present. 
you have not ceased to function because you know who your God is. You have not ceased to function because you know what the Spirit of God promises you. My pain and my sorrow and my circumstance are temporary, but the oil of joy sustains me despite what is happening around me. What if the oil of joy is found in the righteousness of Christ? And I draw myself once again to the righteousness of Christ. And when I step close to his righteousness and I deal with my sin, despite how long I've been a Christian, I will change the room when I walk in it. What does God want to do in you in 2022? I believe he wants you to change every room when you walk in it. And it begins with the fruit of the Spirit being joy. Because this world is lacking it and needs it. Not happiness on circumstance. Not happiness because pain isn't present. But joy, no matter what comes your way. Would you stand with me? The presence of joy is there and evident when you have an eternal relationship with Jesus. You've let him deal with your sin. You walk with the Holy Spirit and you've declared that you love him more than anything else. And we're gonna take the next few moments before you look to your watch or look for an exit. I wanna challenge you before you leave this house today or walk away online, I wanna challenge you to say, God, would you put in me the oil of joy this year? Would you change my heart so that when I walk into a room, it changes? Come on, one more time. We're going to press into the presence of God. We're going to worship him one more time. And I want to pray a blessing over you at the end. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation. I pray that this will be a declaration for the year to come. That we will be marked by the oil of joy. That we will no longer cease to function, but God, we will operate and bear fruit the way you've declared over our lives. Lord, I pray that we will be a people that changes the room when we walk in. Lord, help us deal with the things that have separated us from you. Help us stand in the righteousness of Christ. Help us walk in step with the Holy Spirit. And help us love you, Jesus, more than anything else. And Father, I pray for everyone within the sound of my voice. I pray that your face shine upon them. Would you turn your countenance to them? Give them peace and rest and joy. And may we walk into this year with high hopes, despite the circumstance, that we will be a people that changes the room. In Jesus' name, all God's people say amen. Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise today? We love you. Happy New Year. And we'll see you back here next week. Hey, thank you for watching the North Place Church YouTube channel. If today's message impacted you, we would love for you to join our North Place from Any Place family so that we can connect with you and help you take the next steps in your relationship with Jesus. Subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of the content available to you. 
And if you would like to partner with us in furthering the mission of God through North Place Church, click the link for ways to give and be a part of what is happening here at North Place. I'm so glad that you joined us today, and I look forward to seeing you right back here next week.